always, I'm going to ask every one of you to make sure that you not only vote, I will even ask you to vote early and vote often. That's the way we do it in Arkansas. Give it a try in South Carolina. Now, some politicians get up and say, it doesn't matter who you vote for as long as you just vote. Well, I'm going to let somebody else say that because I'm going to tell you, it matters who you vote for. So if you're not going to vote for me, just stay home tomorrow and watch cartoons. Sleep in, make a pot of chili, do whatever you got to do, stay home. If you're going to vote for me, I don't care what the weather is, I don't care how you feel, get up, get to the polls, and vote, and take somebody with you who's going to vote for me. And then we're going to make history tomorrow night, because a lot of people said, we can't run this campaign when I'm being outspent anywhere from 20 to 1 to 50 to 1 by some of the other candidates. But you know why it's happened? Because there are a lot of people in America who want somebody to be president who will be a voice for them. And I want to be the voice for the people who do serve the food and drive the trucks, as well as for the folks at the top. But I'm not sure they need the same voice, because they'll find a way to have theirs heard. But there's a lot of people in this country that just need to know that a president remembers that every day there's a world of hurt out there. Look, I understand something about what it means to struggle. I came up in a family, and life wasn't all that easy. I was born out of two parents who came through the Depression in a world war. My father was a firefighter in Hope, Arkansas. It's what he did for a living. But there wasn't much money in it. On his days off, he was a mechanic. My dad never finished high school. Neither did his dad or his dad before him. In fact, I was the first male in my entire family lineage to even graduate high school, much less go into college. My parents wanted me to do better. My mother was the oldest of seven kids, grew up with a house of dirt floors and outdoor toilets. And she didn't want that for her kids. And they made incredible sacrifices, and they instilled in us a work ethic and also the idea that an education would be a ticket to live in a better life. I paid my way through college working 40 hours a week. I got through in two years and three months. And it wasn't because I was all that smart because I couldn't afford to stay there for four years is what it amounted to. I don't say that because I think, oh, that's terrible. No, it was wonderful because I learned that in this country that a kid like me could not only get through college, but dream great dreams and see them come true. When I was eight years old, my dad took me to hear a speech by the governor of Arkansas who was coming to our part of the state to dedicate a lake. I'll never forget it because he said, now, son, I'm going to take you down there and you won't hear the governor talk. I'm going to make sure you go because, son, you may live your whole life and you may never see a governor in person. <laughs> Little did my dad know that one day his son, the fireman's son, would become the 44th governor of the state of Arkansas. And more importantly, with your help tomorrow, I'll be well on my way to becoming the 44th president of the United States of America. This is a great kind of neat if you let me play one with the band. Okay? Let's get the band up here and let's rock this house in Columbia, South Carolina.